Pong isn't the first arcade game. In fact, the first arcade game was released in 1971, a whole year before Pong was initially developed. How could several news companies miss this obvious truth and even Google search itself? This is the story of the world's first ever arcade game. The story starts about 50 years ago. Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney would come to make the first commercially sold arcade game called Computer Space. Computer Space was the first arcade game produced in the masses, producing over 1,500 machines upon release. But things aren't so simple though. There's also another game called Galaxy Game, which was mere days or weeks within the time frame of Computer Space's development. What's more interesting is that Galaxy Game and Computer Space have similar gameplay, including shooting enemies with bullets and both being present in space. Both games also follow Newton's three laws of motion. One, an object stays at a constant speed unless another force is touching it. Two, force equals mass times acceleration. And lastly, three, the object has an equal and opposite push of force. Those were some of the similarities, but there's also many differences. In Galaxy Game, there's a gravity well, which is a gravity field that pulls any objects towards it. In this case, the player and the enemy ship. This can be a one player game, but it's usually played with two people controlling each ship. But in computer space, there isn't any gravity field and the enemies are AI UFOs that just move in a zigzag pattern. Even with these differences, this seems oddly coincidental. Two space games both released in close proximity and are both contenders for the first arcade games ever made. Seems rather unlikely that both games were so similar. But there's a simple answer. They took inspiration from an older game called Space War. Space War was released on the PDP-1 and costing over $120,000 at the time. The only place that could afford this data processor were colleges. In fact, Galaxy Game and Computer Space developers both openly acknowledged that they took inspiration from the project itself, deeming them both pretty similar to the original project. Galaxy Game was a continuation of the game, which had many similarities like a needle and wedge-shaped ships, a gravity well, and a player versus player type game, while Computer Space had a completely different gameplay, UFOs, bullets, and a seemingly smart AI. Computer Space was intended to be commercial, however, and Galaxy Game the opposite. Galaxy Game was a test on the technical side of coin-operated video games rather than the business side of things, which is also the reason why there's only one copy of the entire game in the world. Now, which is first though? The answer is on Google, and according to this source, Computer Space had a working prototype two months before Galaxy Game, deeming Computer Space the world's first ever arcade game. After Computer Space prototype was finished, the developers spent the next few months arranging its release. In the beginning, it was supposed to release 1500 arcade machines to test out the waters of the arcade market. However, Bushnell was only able to sell 1300 copies and the other 100 to 200 copies were not able to be sold. However, he still made a massive amount of profit from the markup price given to the machines, coming out with almost $1 million at the time and now worth over $6 million in today's times. Overall, the game didn't really reach the outskirts of the market, but was still considered to be a fun and engaging first video game. The question still remains, why has Pong overtaken Computer Space's majority of the credit? It seems odd that Vanity Fair, Amiga World, and other professional news publications would make such an error without getting called upon. You see, when Nolan Bushnell left Computer Space development, he went to co-found Atari, the creator of Pong. All along, the creator of the first video game was also the creator of the third video game that was called the first video game. Quite confusing to say the least. Now, what makes Pong more appealing than Computer Space? That the popularity of Pong would overtake the existence of Computer Space until the rise of Google Search. It seems like an open-ended question, but it has a simple answer. It's because Pong was easy to latch on. Easy controls, simple gameplay, allowed him for the most addictive game ever. The game didn't feature much, up and down movement in a ball, while Computer Space had Newtonian physics, wraparound implemented, and even AI enemies to keep the game fun. 
Plus, it was too complicated for many and just wasn't a good moneymaker in general. To this day, Google was misleading saying that the first commercially successful video game had to be mainstream, which is false. They did end up kind of fixing it, but in this drop down, there is false information. It's finally time to remake the game. The goal for this experiment is to make it as fast as possible with today's resources and compare how easy it is to make games in these times compared to 50 years ago. I will also be adding other features that make the game more fun. However, in the description in the GitHub, I added comments where you can delete specific code to revert it back closer to the original game. The first thing to do is make the Newtonian physics described earlier. The physics is generally considered to be present in the real world and realistic. Therefore, Unity has its own physics system called Rigid Body. The physics system simulates something that would be in the real world, and if we turn the gravity down, it perfectly simulates what it would be in space, assuming that there's no gravitational pull. By then adding an imbalance force towards the player's direction, the ship can now only move in one direction. In the original game, changing the direction of the ship does not affect the force or velocity, so just rotating the object will allow the ship to traverse freely. Next is adding shooting. Shooting only applies force for a fraction of a second, so doing this makes it so it has constant velocity. So I made it so that it takes the player's X and Y components and makes the bullet's velocity that so it doesn't change. The player's officially done, so it's time to move on to the UFO. The UFO in this game moves in a zigzag pattern using transform.lerp and giving a speed and time. The UFO movement is now complete. Next, to find out where the UFO shoots the player, the best way to do this is take a vector between the player and the UFO and shoot it there. Another huge part to the game is the wraparound effect. When the player moves off of the screen, it appears on the other side, appearing to be infinite. We can achieve this effect by getting the screen size, then the player's direction is going, then place it on the opposite side. Same thing with the UFOs. Lastly was to make a game loop. In the game, there are two outcomes. One, if the player kills more UFOs than the UFOs kill the player, then the player team wins, and vice versa. This way, we now have an idea how the game can ultimately end and restart. The game is done, so I just added one more death panel screen and it's complete. Overall, the game took about 10 hours, which I'm not proud of, but was mostly focused on the wraparound effect. The project is now on GitHub if you want to try it out. Those two games are the only known first arcade games to this day, but what if someone created another arcade game and just shelved it in a house for no one to find it? And what if I told you I created it? Alright, I'm joking. Subscribe, like, and join my Discord server, and once you've done that, remember to comment space to show your support. Alright, cheers.